my Defender fans, well, I'm making that leap because I assume that if you're watching this, you've at least got a passing interest in all things Land Rover Defender. I thought I'd start this channel to find out what makes many perfectly rational people from around the UK and indeed right around the world choose to drive a vehicle that's very closely related to the original series Land Rover that was introduced in 1948 and why they think that this would be the ideal daily driver for them. Whether your Defender is a bone stock, farmyard workhorse or a pimped and polished Chelsea truck, I'd like to find out what makes it the right choice for you. Your business might rely on a trusty 130, or your 110 might be a vital lifeline link for rural communities. But whatever you do, and whatever your daily defender is, I'd like to feature it on this channel. There's no judgement here, no rights, no wrongs. There's only one qualification needed to appear on the channel, and that is that your defender is your daily driver. And I'm using the term defender in its broadest sense. I'm perfectly happy to feature old series Land Rovers alongside 2020 onwards Defenders, as long as they're your choice for daily transport. So let me know what it is that you love about your Defender and why for you, it makes the obvious choice to be your daily driver. Now, let's get on with the video and meet our first contributor. Hi Defender fans. I'm flat top and I'm on the road again on my way to visit a daily Defender driver who wants to tell us a little bit more about their truck and why for them it's the perfect everyday transport. start I'd like to ask one question where are we and why are there so many damn midges I'm being eaten alive well we're up here on Macclesfield Old Road uh, it's just outside Buxton very popular with cyclists bikers Land Rover drivers and of course midges at this time of year okay well now that we know we're out in the middle of nowhere tell us a little bit about your truck well, that is a coincidence, wouldn't you know it? I'm called Flat Top 2. I live in Stoke-on-Trent uh, in the Midlands. Some people might know it as the Potteries. And I drive a 110 station wagon from 2009. I work for Auto Spray Systems. We supply large agricultural drones and robots to farms. So most of the time I'm towing a twin axle trailer, uh, either delivering drones and robots to farms or for demonstrations. So while that means that most of my mileage is on the motorway. We always end up down the twisty farm lanes. And then because the drones are used to treat inaccessible and extreme uh, terrain areas, we always end up towing cross country to the final setup point. And actually, that's a pretty good summary of why I choose the Defender as my daily driver. Well, that gives us a little bit of background, but what about the detail of your truck? Let's dig a little bit deeper. What is it that makes it so suitable for your particular work? The 110 is actually a perfect base for a tow truck. Uh, and this one's had a few tweaks to make it even better. The previous owner fitted it all around with twin shocks. So this limits squat when it's fully loaded and got the trailer on. But even better, it hasn't ruined the ride when it's, uh, when it's empty. What it's also done is leveled up its stance so that sometimes you get a nose down stance with 110s and this one sits lovely and flat uh, regardless of whether it's towing or just driving around town. And yes, for those of you who are good with maths, you'll probably have realised that there is a downside because now when it comes to changing or maintaining shocks, I've got eight to look after instead of four. But of course, any daily defender has to be able to cope with daily family life. And that means school runs, it means being able to take the kids on holiday. So this is why the 110 is the only practical choice for me. I've owned 90s, but this just gives me more flexibility. Also, when you turn up on a farm in a defender and you've driven 200 miles, there's always a few jokes, a few stories to tell, and uh, it always breaks the ice. And there's often quite a lot of sympathy too. 
There are a few other mods that uh, also help to make this the ideal truck for me. Uh, I fitted a sliding drawer in the rear, uh, and this is absolutely great for your recovery gear, your uh, uh, towing equipment, tools, all the things that you normally end up having rattling around in the back of your Defender normally. The sliding drawer also has the benefit of basically making the boot bigger. Uh, it's brought the floor up to the uh, wheel arch level, which really does mean it feels much more usable. Okay, so what's the favorite upgrade you've made to your truck so far? One of my favorite upgrades is the solar panel on the roof. Uh, I recently upgraded this to a higher capacity and this keeps the leisure battery and the vehicle battery topped up all the time. And what's really useful is when we're doing agricultural shows, which are usually outside, this allows me to run a decent sized fridge with refreshments in and uh, I can run that day and night, which is really very helpful. And I'm just back from a couple of weeks in the south of France camping with the kids where we had temperatures of plus 40 outside and a lot warmer than that in the back of the truck. And it still kept the fridge and the freezer frozen and most importantly kept the beers cool. However, when I'm camping in Wales, I sometimes think that a hydroelectric system of some sort would give me a little more power security. I also really rate the two inch receiver system at the back. Uh, this allows me to be towing one day, get back, put a bike rack on, get to the campsite, take the bike rack off. Then we put the uh, step on the back, which allows the kids to get into the back more easily. Quick, simple, just no hassle. But probably my favorite upgrade is also the simplest, quickest, cheapest that I've done. And that was to simply run a strip of Scotch grip tape down the rock sliders. This means you can confidently use them even when it's wet without fear of skinning your knees when you slip off, which usually happens. I'd recommend this upgrade to anyone. That's interesting. And what upgrades do you have planned for your truck in the future? Yeah, well, that's the weird thing about Defenders. The more you change and upgrade, the longer your list of upgrades seems to grow. And I actually think this is one of the Defenders' greatest uh, benefits in that the more you use it, the more you understand how you need to change the vehicle to suit your needs very specifically. And this is why they make such good everyday transport. Probably first on the list would be seats, uh, front seats uh, for the motorway mileage. The stock seats don't offer a lot of support if you're tall. And I changed the uh, foams five years ago, but these are already beginning to sag. So I think that's top of the list. I've heard good things about the Exmoor seats and even the Lucari ones uh, look very nice. But what's important to me is that there must be removable seat bases. I know some people will say you don't need them, but trust me, when push comes to shove and it's 4 a.m., it's dark and you've got a ferry to catch and 600 miles to go, you want to be able to rip the seat out sharpish when you get a, a flat battery. Another thing I'd like to upgrade, I suppose it's not an essential, it's a nice to have, would be the winch. My faithful old Warren gave up the ghost uh, earlier this year. And my first thoughts would be to replace it with another Warren, but I'm just not sure if the new ones are made to the same standards <coughs> as the old ones. Any comments on that would be really appreciated. Well, for anyone who's not used to living with a Defender, it must sound like they're the only choice. Are there any downsides to owning a Defender? Even the most devoted Defender addict will tell you there are plenty of downsides to living with a Defender. If you're tall, there's not much space. Whether you're tall or short, there's no elbow room. In summer, they're hot because you get blasted with heat from the transmission and the engine. In winter, they're cold because the heater really isn't state of the art. And of course, the drafts whip away any heat that might accumulate. It's also noisy, so phone calls are a challenge unless you slow down to sub 30, maybe 20 miles an hour, then it's doable, but still not great. And they leak water like no car I've ever known. I've taken out all the carpets, replaced it with cut rubber uh, sheeting, which you can just uh, wop, mop the water off. So that's a bit better. And then there are the big bills. 18 months ago, I lost fifth and sixth gear while out on a run. That meant a reconned gearbox. While it was out, of course, we did the clutch. Long story short, thick end of 1500 quid. And, uh, but now I've got a transmission that's pretty solid. And in March, 
coming back from the Yorkshire, Yorkshire Agricultural Machinery Show with a trailer on the back, just as you come up over the M62 over the Pennines between Leeds and Manchester. The turbo blew, it started feeding the engine on its own oil, runaway engine, had to stall it on the hard shoulder. And uh, that was a long night, 11 hours to get home and a big bill. New engine, new turbo, new water pump, new fuel pump. So really now I've got a complete new engine and transmission, so I should be good for another couple of hundred thousand. Actually, I suppose this is a good time to thank Alex and Jody at Staffordshire 4x4. They do all of the heavy lifting uh, work on this truck. They replace the gearbox, the engine, and basically keep me on the road. Okay, well that certainly does balance things up a bit. Is owning a Defender like this really worth all those big bills? Well, the way I think about it is, a Defender's a bit like Trigger's Broom. Remember the old Fools and Horses programme? Bits will wear out, bits will need replacing, but as long as you keep on top of it, you'll have a truck which will last a lifetime. Look, this is a 13 year old truck and it's running better than it's ever done. Well, the parts are relatively cheap. They're easy to come by and uh, pretty easy to fit. So I can see this vehicle lasting for another 10, 15 years, no problem. In fact, longer than that. And it's, better, it's running better now than it ever has done. So that's something that would be very difficult to envisage with a modern truck these days. That's a good point. And to anyone who's not familiar with Trigger's Broom, I'll put a link in the show notes below. I guarantee if you watch it, you'll laugh. So if you had to summarize why it is that you love your Defender so much, how would you do that? <clears throat> well, if I had to be concise, I'd say character and continuity. Character, because every drive in the Defender is an adventure. The, you have to physically drive this truck. The gear throw is long, the clutch is heavy, the steering's vague. But if your glasses are sufficiently rose tinted, you can look at these uh, flaws as character and it's what makes driving a Land Rover Defender so addictive. And continuity. Once you've owned a Defender, it's quite likely that you'll own it for a long time. You'll get to know everything about the truck and it becomes very difficult to think of life without a Defender in it. Okay, well, thanks for that. Look, let's finish on a controversial note. Do you take part in the Defender wave? You know that little wave of a hand, flash of the lights? When you pass another Defender on the road, do you do it? Well, of course I do. It'd be rude not to, wouldn't it? And in fact, that's possibly one of the third reasons why I like Defender ownership, and that is community. I, don't, I can't think of any vehicle that has such a strong community around it, and everyone comes up to you and talks to you. You might not consider that a bonus. Uh, uh, people let you out of junctions. And it's the Defender wave is really just a way of acknowledging that community. Well, thanks for your time, Flat Top. Really appreciate it. And thanks for telling us about your truck and why it's your perfect Defender Daily. For those who've been watching, any thoughts on seat upgrades with removable bases or winches, much appreciated in the comments below. And until next time, thanks for watching. Now let's get away from these damn midges. Oh, you sons of bitches. Well, there was one thing that enjoyed the swarms of midges and it was this spider who filled his boots as quickly as he could. Well done, spider. If you like what you've seen and would like to see your Defender featured on the channel, it's really very simple. Grab your phone and record a video where you answer the questions that are listed in the show notes below and we'll get it on the channel. I've included a few settings and a few tips in the notes below that will help you get the most from your video to make it look as good as possible on the channel. And for the most interesting examples, I'll come out and we'll do a slightly more in-depth review of your truck and what makes it your perfect Defender Daily. Thanks for watching and I look forward to hearing from you.